When it goes into manufacturing, it goes into single vat manufacturing. Single vat, what does that mean? It means a single box system. It goes into this nice vat and we go through the entire manufacturing process to avoid cross-contamination and other things that happen to products along the way. Then, guess what? Because there's humans involved in the manufacturing process, and even though there's some medically sealed rooms and white glove treatment and everything else, things happen. So when it goes from manufacturing, it goes back into quarantine and all those tests we did the first time, we do a second time. And then they send me the certificate of analysis and they say, okay, everything's clean, everything's passed. Are you ready to receive shipment? I let them ship it to me, it hits our dock, and guess what? We test it again. Not because I don't trust people, it's because I don't trust anybody. Remember, I was a lawyer for 20 years, okay? And what ends up happening is our average time is 8 to 12 weeks. That's how long it takes us from the time we manufacture. So as a result, guess what? When you get something from us, I know because guess what? My kids use this. My mother uses this. I use all of our products. So do Logan's kids and all the other executives' kids and families. I know that I can give the product to you and I can sleep at night with my head on the pillow without, without any problems knowing that you have the highest quality, best ingredient product there is available. How about that? Okay, that, that's volume. Now, purpose, purposeful product development. You know, one of the things we believe in is we believe in identifying problems uh, and then finding a solution to those problems. And what I mean by a problem is, for instance, let's look at the shot, for instance. Anyone tried the shot? Okay. So here's the basic elements of the way the shot was created. I have two teenagers, an 18 year old and a 16 year old. Uh, and they had a lot of friends coming over to the house because it seems like my house is where everyone wants to come, mainly because the pantry is always stocked and I have a nice pool that everyone wants to stay in. Sometimes I think they live there. I've even got teenagers that come to my house when my kids aren't there just to look at the pantry and say hello Mr. Bennett and leave. It's just, I have that house. But they kept bringing these things into my house. And remember, I don't talk bad about other companies. There were these little things and they last about five hours. <laughs> and, uh, and I turned one of them over one time and I said, okay, what, what's the ingredient panel on this thing? Had no plans of ever creating a shot. Turn it over, 8,333% of the B complex vitamins in one shot. Let me let that sit in, 8,333% of the recommended daily allowance. Now, Real quick, the RDA, which is that recommended daily allowance. Does anybody know the last time it was updated? 1945, that's 75 years ago. Yeah, long time ago, okay. It, it was World War II, that was the last time it was updated. And in fact, if you wanna really know how accurate it is, do this for me. Look at what they've now said about vitamin C and vitamin D. <laughs> we missed it by 10 times or so, okay. I mean, it was crazy. Crazy, all right, so when I say RDA, you know, you need to be very careful with that because there's some real questions. I get to talk to doctors all the time, and one of the things they always throw at me is, well, the RDA says this, and I said, well, when was the last time it was updated, and I get a blank stare. And when I tell them, they're like, oh, it's, it's an interesting conversation, trust me. But the shot, when I looked at it, 8,333% is a lot. What does that cause? Vasodilation, big word, vasodilation, a widening of the veins, causing blood to flow more freely. But guess where? In the inner ear in the brain. These are teenagers. The brain stops developing at age 22. Guess what happens to their brain if they have too much vasodilation when they're taking four and five of these shots a day? I don't know, neither does anybody else, but I'm not willing to let it sit around and figure it out later. Okay, because a developing brain just doesn't need those things. So, you know, I went to Logan, we started talking, and he goes, we need to do something about it. Can we do something about it? I said, absolutely we can. So we decided to go with product development on a shot. So, started out with this. Why do people take energy drinks? Is it just to get energy? No, it's actually to get something done. They want to accomplish something. They either want to do a task, they want to study for something, they want to drive and not kill somebody because they're feeling tired, or you know, whatever the case may be, they're trying to accomplish a task. So we said, okay, there's, then obviously there's mental clarity components in these shots. Guess what? There's not. None of them. So what happens is what? They take an energy shot, these teenagers, and then they're like me every day. They're ADHD buddies. Ding, 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 ding. They're all, they have all this energy and nowhere to go. They're not focused. So we decided to look at mental clarity in the shot. So we decided we were gonna add it in. We talked to the product manufacturers and they said, well, Mark, no one does this. I said, well, why not? They said, it's too, too expensive. Too expensive. All right, so the way that we create products, just so you know real quick, is we'll find out what the top five products are in a product category. 
We'll take those top five, we'll create one that's a, the best of those five, and then we create one that's better than that. So that when I stand on stage, and Scott stands on stage, and Logan stands on stage, we can say we have the best quality, best ingredient product on the planet, and know that if anyone wants to challenge us, show it to me because I haven't seen it yet. But most importantly is this, cost is never the first issue. Most companies say, hey, you have $2 to build the best product you can, come out with $2, because if I get it at $2 and I can sell it for $10, and now I can make all this profit. We say make the best product you can, figure out what is best so that we can say that it's the best, and then we'll figure out what it costs later, because we don't care about cost, we care about quality. Because doing what's right is always the first thing that we look for. Now, with the shot, when we added the mental clarity component, it was a novel concept. We started testing this, and what we found is this. People got the energy that they wanted, but most importantly, they were able to lock in and focus on the tasks that they were trying to accomplish. It's a novel concept. But guess what happens? Now all those teenagers that were coming into the house, now they're, you know, using the IP Life shot as opposed to those other things that they were using, which is costing me a fortune. <laughs> so, exactly. The, the, the employee discount isn't as good as it should be. <laughs> All right, but that's, you know, that's just one example. Natural and organically derived ingredients. You know, when we decided we were gonna start the company, we decided that we were gonna make this the priority, that everything's gonna be derived from natural and organic, and organic ingredients. Now, why do we say the word natural? You know, natural is a, is a term a lot of companies hide behind. Let me teach you something about the word natural when you see it in marketing. Natural means this, the product was naturally derived, and then I synthesized it three times, put it through a process, and came out with something else. That's what most companies say. Why do we use the word natural? Okay. All right, so here's the thing. We put mineral minerals in our products. A mineral is inorganic by nature. In fact, if you have two minerals, guess what? You have a rock. I used to say a mineral is a rock, it's actually not true. There has to be two minerals in order to form a rock, so now I say it's a part of a rock. But it is inorganic, so how can I say that everything is organically derived if we use minerals and I know that it's inorganic by nature? So why do we use the word natural? Because I was a lawyer for 20 years, so I want to be dead on spot accurate. By the way, anything that I say today, I want you to Google. I actually had somebody in New Jersey last week that recorded the whole thing, went out and actually did research on everything that I said and found one mistake, and I'll, and I'll correct it when I get there in a second. Uh, I missed it by 0.2%. I was pretty proud of the fact that she found that. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But that's why we use the word natural. Then we have all these other wonderful words. You know, gluten-free, hormone-free, non-GMO, casein-free, soy-free. And everyone seems to know what those mean. Or do we? All right, so let's look at this. Genetically modified organisms. I already told you, science does not know what this is doing to us. But I can guarantee you a tomato was not designed to be the size of a basketball. Okay? A pumpkin, which we're going to see very soon, was not designed to be a thousand pounds and be lifted with a crane. But we're going to see a lot of those things. You know, thank you, science. And what's interesting now is we're starting to cross-combine structures. So now you're going to have a tomato crossed with an apple to create a new thing, and we have no idea what that's going to do or what it's going to create. And you think I'm kidding? Just wait. You're going to see them coming. Now, here's some information about GMOs that you may not have known. 30,000 products on the shelves, 70% of the products that you eat every single day. And here's the best part, it's not just on those inner aisles of the grocery store, it's on the outer aisles as well. It's your milk, it's your eggs, it's your cheese, it's your vegetables, genetically modified organisms everywhere. Here's the best part, I a, news report, a news poll said that 87% of Americans want our products labeled as genetically modified. You know we're the only industrialized country in the world that does not make manufacturers label genetically modified organisms on the products? We're the only one. 87% of Americans say we want this, and our federal government keeps saying, nah, you don't need it. I wonder how much money Monsanto and all the rest of them are throwing in the direction of the federal government to prevent this from occurring. This is a travesty, especially since we don't know what this is doing to us. Okay. And then, of course, you have 53% would not buy a genetically modified food. That's my favorite. 53% of Americans say they would not buy a genetically modified organism if they knew that it was genetically modified. Here's a little thing that you can teach yourself real quick. If you walk into the grocery store and you go over to the vegetable aisle and you see corn, six for a dollar, it is genetically modified. <laughs> if you see corn that's two bucks an ear, probably organic. Real simple. But yeah, guess what? Everyone always goes to the genetically modified aisle. And here's the thing, here's where I got it wrong. 94% of corn in this country is genetically modified, 94%. I used to say 100% of the soybeans in this country are genetically modified. 
That's actually not right, I've been told, I've been corrected. It's 99.8% of the soybeans in this country are genetically modified. There are 2.2% of the soybeans in this country are not <coughs> genetically modified. Now, why do I say soy and why do I say corn? Two most prevalent ingredients in almost every processed food that we have. You know, I walked into Whole Foods recently. Uh, I had a meeting with those guys down in Austin and had a little extra time to burn, so I walk into the main store down in Austin to say, yeah, let's see what they have going on. And they had a bar set up that they were doing bar testing. You guys would think I just, I get off on this stuff, but I really don't. I, I really do enjoy this, but uh, I don't like making fun of people. They have 17 different bars at this table, and I'm with one of the other executives in the company, I'm just walking by, and I'm like, I'm not gonna stop, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna keep going. Wouldn't you know it, this little person behind the table comes out, around, gets right in front of me and says, would you like to try a bar? <laughs> I sat there for a second, I was like, no, no, I, I really probably shouldn't. She goes, no, really, this one's really good, and sticks it up in my face. I was like, okay, I look at him, I'm like, okay, here we go. I said, do you have the ingredient panel? And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it's right here. So she hands it to me. I was like, I'm reading it. I'm like, hmm. I said, you have non-GMO on, uh, on the front of the label. She goes, yeah. I said, well, you know, the FDA doesn't regulate that, neither, neither, neither does anyone else on the non-GMO side of the label. You guys do know that, right? There is no regulation authority for non-GMO. Anybody know that? Yeah. In other words, when you see it on the front, you don't know if it's real or not. So educate yourself a little bit. So I see that, I'm like, that's interesting. I said, because on the back, you have soy lectin and a lot of other soy products in this bar. I said, where do you source your soy from? And she goes this, she goes, oh, we're all made in the USA. Mm. I was like, all righty then, let's have a further discussion. Now I have a table full of people that are kind of surrounding now because I kind of sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm asking some you know, educated questions. And I said, well, when I actually told her 100% of soybeans in this country come from genetically modified organisms, how can you claim non-GMO on the front, but yet you have soy in the product? She says this, well, we have one bar up here in the front that doesn't have soy in it. <laughs> she doesn't address the issue, she goes right to that one. And I turned that one over and I said, well, you know, this one's actually you know, not a bad bar. This is, actually, this is actually something I can use. I said, but really, it's just, it's just not something I'm interested in. Set it down and I'm walking away. As I walk away, I turn around and all the people that were around the table start putting the bars back and walking away. I tell Whole Foods this story. Because here's the thing, they didn't know. They didn't know. Because ultimately what they did is they relied on the supplier to say, yeah, it's non-GMO. They had all of these certificates. They had all these various things. But as soon as you put made in the USA, non-GMO, and soy together, the statistical probability that it is non-GMO is so minuscule that all of a sudden Whole Foods calls up and says, okay, guys, now prove it to us. Because then I got a phone call from the product development team saying, hey, can you give us that information again because we need to talk to this bar company. This is the kind of stuff that's going on. When the FDA, USDA, and others don't regulate what's on the front of the label, only on what's the back of the label, you have to educate yourself a little bit about what's going on and what you're consuming. So, this is the newest thing. Anyone run into this yet? Uh, competitors saying, oh, well, we have whole food supplements. Everyone here, if you haven't heard it yet, it's coming. This is the number one attack on ID Life right now in, their, in the ID Nutrition platform. Well, ours is a whole food supplement. Interesting, you know what whole food supplement means? means it's non-synthetic. Remember that thing we said about Idealat, all naturally, organically derived, non-synthetics? Guess what, so are we. But here's the one thing that we also say, non-GMO. Can they say that their whole food supplements are non-GMO? They don't make that claim. All they say is we're a whole food supplement. Now you're educated on genetically modified organisms. Now you know how to ask the question, well, that's great, you're a whole food supplement. Are you non-GMO? And the answer is usually, well, I don't know. I think so. That's usually the response. I get these kind of questions. Our advocates get these kind of calls in. We started getting a big flood of this, so I added it to the presentation so people can see it, and I give them that information. How about this one? What if I told you that I could guarantee that you'd live 3.4 years longer than you currently are going to if you did one thing? Would you do it? Sure. Every single person in the room would, right? Sure. Guess what? All you have to do is engage in 20 minutes of physical activity a day. Scientifically proven, you will live 3.4 years longer if all you do is engage in 20 minutes of physical activity a day. They did a study on 20,000 people. Isn't that crazy? 20, 20 minutes a day, not a lot. And physical activity does not mean go into a gym and lift a lot of heavy weights and 
you know, tear yourself up in a CrossFit gym. It means move the left foot in front of the right, the right foot in front of the left, and repeat. Just move. We don't move in this country anymore. You know, here's the best part. If you don't move, you are going to spend, on average, $1,429 more per year in medical expenses. $1,429 more. 52% of Americans don't meet the minimum requirements for physical activity every day. That's 20 minutes of movement. 52% of Americans, here's the worst part. It's about 48% of our kids. The 69%, it's a big deal. You know, 20 years ago, it was 54%, so we went up 15%. Our kids went from 10% to 33%. Kids is the issue. That's where we're really having a problem in this country. Here's the best part. In 1960 to now, we burn 140 fewer calories a day because of our lifestyle and our activity. That's 14.6 pounds each year. The average American gains four to six pounds per year. Four to six pounds. Guess what? We're doing this to ourselves. We're doing it to ourselves. In fact, you heard Scotty say last night, I had to add this in because he said I would talk about it today. You know, last year, Mexico, actually it's two years ago, Mexico overtook us as the heaviest population in the world. And you no, know, we're Americans. We're not going to be outdone by anybody. So we decided we're going to go back and take it. Uh, and we did it in a big way. So we jumped 7% this coming year. We jumped 7% from where we were just two years ago. Now remember, it took us 20 years to go 15%. In two years, we jumped another 7%. And this is not overweight, this is obesity. This is a BMI over 30. We can talk all day whether or not BMI is a true measure of health or not, but I'm talking about people that are considered morbidly obese, pre-diabetic, pre-metabolic, all kinds of diseases and other things associated with it. American Heart Association. You know, we did a deal with a local branch where we're sponsoring their heart ball, which is their big event of the year. We're also going to be the trainer in the North Texas area for their fit friendly workplace at ID Life, which means the new Toyota, the new Frito-Lay, FedEx, all of these companies that want to associate with the American Heart Association get trained as a fit friendly workplace. They get to come to the ID Life office in Frisco and people like myself and others get to train them on what a fit friendly workplace actually looks like. That was kind of the, the deal. And then, of course, we're talking to the national office about trying to expand it, but they want to see what we can do in North Texas first. But what's interesting about this is, is why we got into a relationship with the American Heart Association. Now, I'm not going to make people stand up, but I'm going to get your attention about what's going on in this country. I could have 10 of you stand up, and if I had 10 of you stand up, I would immediately tell four of you that you could sit down. And the four that sit down, I'm going to tell you this. The good news is you're not going to have a heart-related issue in your life. The four will not. Six standing will have a heart-related issue that they're going to have to deal with in their life. Three people get to sit down next. Those three people, the good news is your heart-related issue will not kill you. The three people remaining standing, I'm sorry, but your heart-related issue will kill you in your lifetime. Now two people get to sit down. The good news is you're going to get a second chance. You're going to have something happen, heart attack or otherwise. You're going to get a second chance. You're not going to listen. You're still going to die from your heart-related issue. The one person standing up, I'm sorry. First day you found out you had a heart-related issue was the day you died. One in ten. That means three people in this room, you're a ticking time bomb. I'm sorry, but that's reality. Now, do I have your attention? Why didn't we do something with the American Heart Association? This is where we're headed in this country. Congestive heart failure is one of the number one killers in this country. We're doing it to ourselves. The heart can only take so much. Guess what? It is preventable. It is something that you can change. It is something that you can do. Yes, part of it is genetics. But part of it is also the hand-to-mouth disease. That is what we have right here. It's the stuff we're using our hand to put in our mouth. I'm talking with you, remember, not at you. I could probably say I was bigger than anyone else in this room at any time. But the issue is this. It's all about education. It's all about information. It's all about getting you the information you need and understanding why a lot has the products that it has. Let's talk about an education. This was actually in the assessment, if you've never seen this. This is asking you how much sugar you consume on a daily basis. The average answer is one to two servings per day. Now, that's 70% of people say one to two servings a day. I'm not going to call you liars, but I'm going to teach you something. Because you probably don't even know this. Did you know 80% of the, of the uh, processed food in this country, 80% have added refined sugar in it? People know that? 
Here's a test I want you to do. I want you to go to the grocery store. 80%. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the grocery store, and I want you to grab the light, fat-free, reduced fat, whatever, you know, your favorite salad dressing. It really does not matter which one. You can test me. Grab it. Okay, now grab the regular version of the same thing and turn them over. What you're going to find is this. The light, fat-free, reduced fat version has twice as much sugar as the regular. Why did they do that? Because if they didn't, you wouldn't eat it because it would taste awful. So they have to put more sugar in it so you'll actually consume it. So what you think you're doing good, you're actually putting more sugar into your system. Most people are trying to lose weight. They want less sugar. Okay, so the average answer is one, two. Well, here's the reality. The average American eats 22 teaspoons a day. Two teaspoons is a serving. That means the average American in this country is having 11 servings of sugar a day. 152 pounds a year. You want to know why we have a weight problem in this country? We're eating out of bags, boxes, jars, cans, and windows. You want to catch the windows one? That's when you reach through and you break it through the window. <laughs> I always said, how many of you like Chinese food? How many of you actually know how to make Chinese food? If you like Chinese food and you don't know how to make it, guess what? That means you're doing this. Okay? But guess what? Our ID Wellness app will actually teach you how to make it yourself. It's actually pretty good. You can learn how. But this is the issue. Every serving is 31 calories. Did you know this? The average American in this country, 17% of their calories on a daily basis come from sugar. 17% come from sugar. So when I go back and look at this one right here and I say, huh, one to two servings, we got some seriously healthy people in Adi Lottie because we're, we're bucking the trend here. And in reality, guess what? Almost every one of us is right here. Every single one of us. And it's not because we trying to lie on our assessment. It's because we read it this way. I'm not adding sugar to anything. I might add it to my coffee. I might add it to my tea. I might add it to something, but I just don't eat a lot of sugar. But when you actually learn that it's already in the products that you're eating, if I showed you how much sugar was in a lot of the fast food in this country, it's, it's crazy. Anyone ever do a, a cleanse? Anyone ever try one of those? Anyone ever eat bad food and actually got the wrong type of cleanse? <laughs> there's, there's a reason why, okay? Your body wasn't designed to process this kind of stuff. It just wasn't, okay? So, manageable weight loss. Why do I talk about this one? You know, manageable is a pound a week, four pounds a month. And most people think, oh, a pound a week, that's, you know, that's not exciting, a pound a week. Well, what if I told you a one pound is the size of a softball? 29 cubic inches. Pound a little bit more significant now? And how about four pounds? Four pounds is the size of a basketball. Now it puts a little bit more perspective in it, doesn't it? If you could lose four pounds, would you like to lose a basketball? I would. Everybody would. The problem is we're in a fast-paced society. We want to lose weight fast. Why am I going through all this stuff? Why am I teaching you all this when I'm supposed to be talking about how do you like products? Remember, all of our products were created for a, for a specific purpose. They were designed a certain way. We have an ingredient panel that has all of the stuff in it that when you educate yourself on all of the stuff that I'm showing you today, you understand why we have the ingredients we have, why we chose the path we did, and why we use the uh, stuff that we, that we do use for purposes of sweetener and other things. Because when you learn all these various things, and you start looking at these types of things, and you look at our IDT program, and we tell you that the average person is going to lose roughly a half to one pound a week, and that if you lose four pounds in that 28-day in that period, that is success. You don't have to be one of these crazy people that say, I lost 17 pounds in 28 days. What I, you know what I do when most people put that on Facebook? I congratulate them, then I private message them and tell them, you're probably dehydrated, please drink more water. <laughs> That's reality. Okay? Because ultimately the issue is this. I want everyone to succeed, but we're not trying to be a diet here. We're not trying to get the fast results here. What we're trying to do is change the way you think. We're trying to educate people. Why do we do that? Why are we the only company that actually provides you the information to get healthy without taking a single product? Because if you get healthy, you know a lot of people, and a lot of people see you on a daily basis. And guess what? When you start getting healthy and you actually start to live the lifestyle, people want to know what you're doing because everyone's looking for the answer. Everybody wants to know how to get accomplished, what they're trying to accomplish. Not a single person in this world that does not want to look and feel better. Not a single person. I can tell you this. When I started losing my weight, every person in the world wanted to come find out how. And then when I told them, every person in the world was like, nah, that's too hard for me. 
Because it was real simple. I said, it's going to take a lot of hard work, and there is no easy answer. That's reality. Because it didn't take overnight to get where we are. It's not going to be overnight to get us where we want to go. Though I can tell you there's a lot of scientists, a lot of doctors, and others that want to change body chemistry and cut things open and do surgeries and all kinds of things for the, fit, for the fast fix. You know, in Houston, there was actually a case I, I saw recently. A 12-year-old child got gastric bypass surgery. 117 pounds overweight, 12 year old child, gastric bypass to save his life. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Guess how it started? He watched how mom and dad ate. He did exactly what mom and dad did. He had a genetic predisposition for that. Guess what? Boom, it happens. I come from a family of morbidly obese people. That's basically my heritage. It is what I developed. You know, when you saw Scott's pictures last night of his mom, my mom was in the same area. My grandmother was in the same area. I've lost every one of my family members to obesity. Yeah, now they called it congestive heart failure. They called it diabetes. They called it other things. But it was obesity that did it. They ate themselves to death. There's a reason why I get up here and teach these things. There's a reason why I'm trying to educate. There's a reason why we're trying to give you the information at ID Life so that you can make an informed decision and informed choice. We want to educate you so you can educate others because we want this reach to be long and strong because we're building a health and wellness company, not a products company. Everybody remember that. Okay, let's talk about my favorite, biometric screening. You get this wonderful test back. It says you're normal. What do you do? I'm normal. I can keep doing exactly what I've been doing. Because if I get into the abnormal category, I'm sure there's a pharmaceutical I can take that will put me right back into normal. Right? That's what most people think. Sometimes you'll get in this high category and you'll kind of think about it a little bit. You'll be like, eh. I may start doing something about that, but in reality, most people wait till they get here to do anything about it. Here's what I want you to learn about your blood test. Educate yourself a little bit, and I want you to look at it differently. Think of it as the Golden Gate Bridge. If you're in the normal category, you're on the road. You know, the road is somewhat safe. There's still some dangers in the road. There's a lot of things out there that you could actually get hit by, but you know, for the purposes of the road, you're, for the most part, you're okay. If you get into that low and high category, you're on the sidewalk. All kinds of things happening on the sidewalk. One of those cars might jump over and hit you. You might actually get blown over the side by the wind. You might get pushed. There's some things that can happen. You really got to start thinking if you get on the sidewalk. But guess what? If you get out of the abnormal category, it is possible that you just fell off the edge. And there may not be a pharmaceutical that gets you back. So why would you even want to get on the sidewalk? Why do you want to do that? Educate yourself. Normal does not mean normal. You know, my wife just got her yearly uh, physical. She got her blood work back, and she was so excited. She called me on the phone, and she goes, hey, everything was normal. And she's heard this speech probably 50 times. And she goes, I was excited about normal for about 15 seconds. And my doctor said, everything looks great. You're normal. And I said, you don't understand. I have to go home to my husband. He's going to explain to me what you didn't. And I did. There was four things in there that worried me. Because I had her blood work from the prior year, and there were some things that were going up. And it was just one of those things. They're precursors to other issues. So guess what? We had to make some diet changes. We had to make some modifications. And now guess what? We had the blood work done again, and everything's back to where it needs to be. But not everybody has somebody like me who can sit there and say, okay, this concerns me. This is a problem. But if you educate yourself, guess what? You can. It's not that difficult. But don't rely on the fact that this means what you're doing is okay. That could be dangerous. So, we're going to change the way you think a little bit. Now, I do like products. You see a curtain back here? You see that? Yeah. The reason why? Because we spent the last, Scotty, 10 and a half months working on the five products that we're bringing out in September. Y'all yeah. want to know what they are? Yes. yes. <laughs> Come to Revolution. Oh, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. No, I will tell you this. Um, I don't get excited about a lot, uh, though I do deal with the scientists, the formulators, and a lot of others, and I have a hand in the cookie jar of, of helping create a lot of these things. I'm really excited about what we're bringing. I really am. Uh, it is going to attack some categories that I have been wanting to do something about a long time, that Logan's been wanting to do something about a long time, that Scott has, our entire executive team has been focused on. And it's taken us a very long time to be able to develop what it is that we've developed because a lot of the manufacturers had never done what it was that we were trying to do. 
and they were scared to try. And it took us a long time to find the right people that were willing to do exactly what was the right thing because they were so accustomed to doing it the same way. You know, I actually got a question the other day from a doctor who said, well, every other company has this particular ratio of sodium potassium. Why do you have a different ratio? I was like, Doc, we don't do what other companies do. I'm sorry. I said, he goes, well, why not? You know, this is the safe way to go. And I said, is it safe? Really? I said, based upon what? And he gave me the one article that he had read. Oh, no, it wasn't 1945. <laughs> it, it, it was recent, but it was, uh, the problem was, it was a lab test on 20 rats in France uh, that he was relying on as the basis of his decision making with regard to what this ratio was. Potassium to sodium ratio, electrolytes. And what was interesting is I had the conversation with the doc, and I was like, you have read the 1985 New England Journal of Medicine and the 2001 Internal Medicine, uh, American Internal Medicine Journal with regard to this issue, have you not? And he's like, what are you talking about? So I gave him all the information. I literally took the time to write up a two-page essay about everything that he needed to know. And what I found was this. 100 years ago, our average potassium consumption was about 11,000 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams of sodium. 11,000 to 2,000. Today, it's about 3,600 milligrams of sodium to about 1,200 milligrams of potassium. Guess which is the more sick society today? Here's the best part. They actually showed scientifically that if you can increase your potassium level above your sodium level, you decrease your chance of heart attack by 21%. So after I gave him all of the information and said, okay, here you go. Now, what was your question again? He was all in without you luck. Here's the problem. A lot of people, when they're looking at these things, they, they don't understand why we did them. So I wanna make sure everyone understands why it is we're doing what we're doing. But most importantly is this. I'm a New York Yankees fan. Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm a New York Yankees fan, even though I was born and bred, born and bred in Texas, grew up 10 minutes from Arlington Stadium, is this. My great-grandfather was Mickey Cochran. Mickey Cochran was a Hall of Fame catcher from the Detroit Tigers, built up the A's. His best friend in the world was Babe Ruth. I grew up as a kid with pictures of him and Babe Ruth together. I thought he was a Yankee. When I was a teenager, I found out that he wasn't. I'm a Yankees fan, okay. <laughs> What's worse is that home plate right there in the old stadium is exactly where his career ended with a beam to the head that cracked his skull, the famous picture. So yes, I'm a fan of the team that ended his career, which makes it even worse, that's irony. But here's the thing that I want you to remember. When most people are going to explain ID life, they do the following. We have this great assessment. It has 1.3 million possible outcomes, 7,500 independent third-party peer reviewed studies with 4,000 algorithms across. What happened? <laughs> What in the world did you just say? Because guess what? You're blown up, you're excited, you're ready to go, you just want to tell everybody everything. But what if we started a little bit different? I want you to think of it as baseball. And I use baseball analogy because that's the world I come from. But you know, it's kind of like a lineup card. What if you did this? Hey, we have a product that is something that is exactly what you need that would replace something that is exactly what you're doing right now without the sugar. Would you be willing to try it? Yes. Hydrate. Why not start there? Why not simply say this? How about if I showed you a way to replace your Powerade, your, Vi your uh, Gatorade, vitamin water, probably the best freaking marketing thing I've ever seen in my life. A product's called vitamin water. What do you think? It's water with vitamins added to it. What they forgot to tell you is eight tablespoons of sugar, <laughs> you know, teaspoons, eight teaspoons of sugar. They forget to tell you that part, but it's a great marketing name, vitamin water. Again, what's on the front is not necessarily what's on the back. Okay, but what if we did that? What if we gave you the hydrate first? Then guess what? 60% of this country suffers with a sleep problem of some type. 60%, there were 60 million prescriptions for sleep aids written last year by doctors. 60 million means one in five people, okay? A lot of people. Why not say, hey, we have an unbelievable sleep product. Treat ID Nutrition for what it is. It's the cleanup hitter, okay? It's not the start. Get them and replace something that they're already using. Give them something that they can actually do something with. Okay, does everybody understand that? Does everybody get that? Okay, because the main thing that I see when I talk to people is they always want to talk to me about ID nutrition, but I always ask them another question first. 
Now, what do you do on a daily basis? Do you work out? Okay, what do you use you know, during your workout? Do you drink water? Do you, oh, no, no, I have a Gatorade, I have a Powerade. Oh, really? I said, well, do you know there's you know, 40 grams of sugar in that? What if I had something that you know, could basically give you all the best parts of that without the sugar? Would you try it? I, Absolutely. I said, okay, well, here, shake this up in the bottle, and as we talk, continue to talk, I just want you to drink it. What happens by the end of our conversation? That's gone, they feel great, it tasted great, they wanna know how they get that. But if I started the conversation, let me explain to you the ID assessment, all the science behind it, blah, 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 blah. And now I have to set you in front of a computer for five to seven minutes so that you can take the assessment. Y'all see the difference? Why do you think every time we talk about mixtures, we say always have samples of the hydrate or energy or something else for people to try? It's for them to actually get it in. Now, obviously, I don't suggest you try a sleep strip in a mixture. <laughs> The very first time I got introduced to the sleep strip, I was with Scott Unkelbach. He says, hey, don't take this here. Make sure you wait till you get home because, you know, it, it'll actually put you to sleep. I said, yeah, right. So I took one and put it in my mouth. About 10 minutes later, I gave the keys to my wife because she was driving home. But here's the one secret about the sleep strip. If you put it on your tongue or on the inside of your cheek, if you put it on your tongue, guess what? It's going to process through your stomach. It's going to take longer to take effect. Okay? If you put it on the inside of your cheek, it's going to go transdermal. You're going to go to sleep faster. So if you want a faster effect, put it on the inside of your cheek. If you want a little bit slower, put it on your tongue. Most people don't know that. Uh, and I will tell you, is it safe for a three-year-old child? I'm going to tell you that it's not recommended for anyone under 100 pounds. But I will tell you that I understand that it works in a three-year-old child. I still can't believe somebody came up to tell me that. But they did cut it into a third. She wouldn't sleep, so I had to try something. It works. Oh, it's just crazy. Uh, well, I guess it is better than NyQuil or Benadryl or whatever else they were going to try. Whiskey. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but, but think of it this way. If you don't remember anything else from today, just remember that. Okay, don't overload people with that with the science. Okay, there's simplistic ways to introduce them to the concept of what ID Life is about. Because every product has its own benefits. Now, here's the thing. Why do I say start with hydrating? 75% of Americans are dehydrated. 75%. You also have to have your electrolyte uptake. It's not enough just to drink water. Oh, by the way, if you're taking pictures of this, this has been in your back office for six months. <laughs> just saying. There's no spent fuel in our back office. I get that. Now, here, here's the best part. I, I, you know, I like to show people this because you can kind of visualize what the sugar looks like. But this little thing right down here that is very difficult to read, I want to read these stats out to you because this is the thing that is going to actually scare you. Sugar beverages in this country, okay, this is the average. Ages 2 to 5, 47 gallons a year. Ages 2 to 5, 47 gallons. 6 to 11, 65 gallons. 12 to 19, 108 gallons a year. <coughs> You can do the math real quick. That's a gallon every three days. See all this? That's one of your favorites. But if you look at all this sugar, what do you think is going on? Why do you think we jump 22% in the obesity rate in kids? We're drinking our calories. Give them another choice. Make hydrate, put it in a pitcher, keep it in the fridge, let them drink as much as they want. You can be okay with it. Okay? Hydrate will last, there's no really, you're just up, uh, electrolyte uptake. So it's basically replenishing what you have. Oh, it'll be fine. It's not going to dissipate or anything. No. In fact, in my house, when I make the picture of hydrate, it lasts usually about a day. Because what ends up happening is people just want that because it's like, hey, that tastes good. Most people, they just don't like the taste of just plain water. Why don't they just like the place to taste? Um, why do people not like water? You know why? Yeah, they, I hear people, they say, it doesn't taste right, it, you know, it's not good, you know, it's, it, it's because they're used to this. Yeah. Why do you think all the schools in this country add all of that stuff? All of, why do you think companies, Coke and Pepsi, and do all these deals with, with schools? Hey, I'll give you a new scoreboard if you'll put a, you know, a, a machine in the office. Why do they do that? We're teaching children what food tastes like. Because guess what happens when they become adults? That's what they buy. That's what happens. So, this is another one. If you drink one soda a day, one a day, for men, you've increased your chance of heart disease by 20%. For women, you've increased your risk of diabetes by 25%. For everybody, you've increased your chances of being overweight by 27%. That's either kind of soda. Doesn't matter. 
just one a day, diet or regular. This is what's happening. So you pick your poison, you can pick your disease, I don't care, but the issue is we do have a problem, okay? Now, am I saying that soda is the problem? No, I'm not necessarily saying soda is the problem. What I'm saying is there are other choices and you need to be informed to make sure that you're making those choices. Hydrate, there's all kinds of fun things you can do with hydrate. By the way, these have been in your back office for about six months too. <laughs> <coughs> If you want to know how to make a popsicle out of hydrate, let me know. I'll show you. It's called frozen water and a popsicle stick. Real simple. Uh, if you need a mold, Target, Walmart, a lot of others have them. They're about $4. Kids absolutely love them, including teenagers. But you see this five gallon of drugs? This is one of those hidden secrets of ID Life. I thought everyone knew, but very few do. So Logan said, why don't we share this with everybody? One canister is the perfect mixture for a five gallon jug. And by the way, that's been on that flyer that's been out for six months. <clears throat> yeah, so in other words, when we're in the Texas heat and you know a sports team or you have a child that's playing sports and they have the little fillers or whatever, go buy a five gallon jug, get you a hydrate canister, mix it up for them and give them a different option. Because here's what's gonna happen by the end of that game. Every kid out there is gonna absolutely love the taste of that hydrate. And you're gonna have an opportunity to explain to every parent that's on that team what you just did for their kids which is we avoided all the sugar, we gave them the electrolytes to uptake, and guess what happened? They actually loved the way that it tasted. Isn't that a novel concept? It's a better choice. If you'd like to learn more, let me know. Is that simple? Simple. All right. Sleep. Remember I told you there's a problem. 60 million prescriptions are written. One in five Americans. $18 billion cost to the U.S. economy because of lack of sleep. This is the effect. I mean, this is the problem that we have. By the way, if you want to sleep your best, the best temperature is between 60 and 67 degrees, scientifically proven. That is cold, but guess what happens when your body gets cold? You don't sweat as much. When you don't sweat as much, you actually go into a deep sleep. Why do you think bears like to hibernate in the winter? <laughs> so there's all kinds of issues. Now, here's the best part. If you stayed up for 24 hours, 24 hours staying up, you stayed up overnight, you have the same as a blood alcohol level of 0.10. In other words, you are just as dangerous as an alcoholic if you stayed up 24 hours and get behind the wheel of a car. That's a major issue. We actually have this problem occurring a lot. Usually what happens in this situation is the person kills themselves, not somebody else. It happens every day in this country. Somebody falls asleep and goes off the road. That's also happened at 12 to 15 hours. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the number at 16 hours is you have a 0.5. At 24 hours, you're at, you're at 0.10 or 0.05. So we have the perfect sleep aid. It's a triphasic. Everyone ever heard the word triphasic? And, and you say, okay, I'm gonna explain this to somebody. I'm gonna say, hey, we have a triphasic approach to sleep. Do this. We have a product that has three ingredients. One of them helps you go to sleep. The other one helps you get into a restful sleep so that if you have an overactive brain like me, you don't wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep. And the third thing is it puts you in that deep REM sleep so that you can actually wake up restored. Isn't that a neat thing? Is that easier to say than, hey, we have a triphasic approach with me uh, melatonin, 5-HTP, and L-theanine? Because guess what? The people that you're talking to know who you are. They know that you don't know what those things are, <laughs> okay? But they know that you can explain what it does and how it affects you. You have your own story, okay? Don't try to be the scientist that you're not. Was I anywhere close to knowing all of those things when I started? No, I was not. I had to learn these things because I wanted to understand why everything that we have works and why it works the way that it does. And most importantly, part of my job is to make sure that what we have is the best possible thing that there is available. So it's to go out there and make sure that we have created what is the best. And if it's not, part of my job is to make it better. And I also rely on the field to give me information. I can't tell you how many times we've changed because the field has said, hey, we have found something that we want you to look into. Scott, Logan, and myself, we'll all get together and we'll say, hey, this is a better option. We'll make those changes. And when we do, we tell you about it. it happens in ID nutrition quite often because the science is always updated. <laughs> Keep it simple. Okay, don't try to be the person that you're not. The bars. Why were the bars created? Real simple. Logan Stout walks in to our executive meeting. And when he walks in, he goes, Mark, he goes, uh, I really, uh, I'm really excited about these bars that Haley's found for me. Now, this is well before the ID Life bar. And he goes, these things are super healthy. I'm really excited about them. He goes, you know, I want you to look at them because I think this is something that, you know, 
we, we might want to talk to this company. Because at the time, we had no intention of going into Mars. None. So he throws it to me. I looked at it, and I was like, hmm, looks great if you want moves. It was full of soy. Now, if you don't understand what soy does to a man, it increases your estrogen level. The reason I said moves is because that's the number one thing that most men are dealing with now because there's so much soy in our food supply. That's the guy that are starting to have the upper area that is not masculine and does not look like a chiseled chest, okay? And he goes, no, this can't be. You know, Haley does all her research. And I was like, well, she does do all her research and there are 10 of the ingredients are really good, but these two down here are really questionable. And he got mad at me and he goes home. He comes back the next day and throws the bar at me, literally, hits me. I, I was like, what's this? He goes, we need to find something better. He goes, let's, let's go make something. He goes, we can't have this. We had this. It took a while, but guess what? We created it. Why did we create the bar? Real simply this. Moms no longer have to compromise when they go by the shelf and decide which bar they're going to choose. They have the kids' bar. Every ingredient, 100% certified organic. The honey, just to give you an idea, from a farm in New Zealand, 400 acre farm, completely covered with a mesh screen. USDA spent a lot of time inspecting that mesh screen to make sure there wasn't a hole in it. Why do you have to cover the farm, 400 acres? Because you can't have cross-pollinization. How else are you gonna get it certified? Just some of the extents that you have to go through to make sure that these bars get their certification. One, there's only four bars in the US that actually have the 100% certified organic seal, well, one of them. And what's interesting about it is not only did we come out with a kid's bar, we also came out with a her bar and a his bar. Now, ladies, don't worry. You can take the his bar. I know you love it because 70% of you buy it instead of the hers bar. It'll be fine. Guys, it's okay if you like the hers bar. We should all get a little bit more in touch with our feminine side. And uh, we all want to be kids again, so try it. It's actually my favorite. So uh, it, it, is a, uh, it, it was a passion of love, but you know what it really was more than anything else was those kiddos. Now that's, that's what got us more than anything else. When we took the opportunity to actually try to create something for kids, because most people in this industry, they focus on adults only. They don't really focus on the kiddos. And we wanted to do something that was the right thing to do for everybody. Uh, Pre-workout and post-workout, real quick. Um, Pre-workout. I get asked all the time, well, on the pre-workout, you, you have creatine in it. Well, why do you have creatine? Doesn't creatine make you retain water? Yes, it does. Creatine is probably the most over-researched supplement on the planet. Don't Google it, you'll see thousands of studies on creatine. But here's the best part, we use a very specific type of creatine in our product. And in fact, what happens is if you do a little bit of research on the creatine that we use, what you'll find is this. Does it make you retain water? Yes. Intramuscular, not extramuscular. What does that mean? It means the water is actually retained inside the muscle belly, not outside the muscle belly. Why is that important? Because all of those molecules, replenishments, enzymes, and everything else that we're giving you within the formula, what are they doing? They're actually making the muscle get bigger. So as a result, if you're going to take pre-workout and post-workout, what you're actually trying to do is build lean muscle. It needs the moisture inside the muscle to actually be able to grow and repair. So what ends up happening is the creatine we gave you keeps the moisture exactly where you need it so it can do exactly what it was designed to do. Novel concept, right? Because remember, when you work out, what are you doing? You're actually tearing the muscle fibers. You're actually releasing those things. You have to repair them. That's what it's for. When you look at the post, same thing. It has creatine in it with the same concept. And the number one question we get is, why is there not protein in your post-workout? Well, two things. One, if you want protein in the form of a shake, we have the best one. Why would we put it in a post-workout? It's unnecessary. And all it would do is increase the cost. Why would you do that? Because a lot of people, believe it or not, after a workout, they believe that a whole food is the best source of protein. So we wanted to give you the option. It was really the right thing to do. It was allowed us to keep the cost down. But most importantly, the post-workout is to actually give you all of the uh, electrolytes, minerals, and vitamins that you need to repair the muscle. Okay? All right. So one other thing on the pre-workout real quick, is I get asked this question a lot before I get to the shot. I get asked on the pre-workout, and I said, what does it do? It will not make you lift more weight. <laughs> it will not give you the ability to lift 250 pounds if all you ever lifted is 200. What it will do is this, and this is the simple thing that you have to remember, it will delay fatigue. Delay fatigue, why is that important? Because if you're in the middle of a workout and you hit minute 25 and you normally fatigue, 
guess what? The rest of your workout's gonna be a little bit limited. But if you delay fatigue until minute 30, are you gonna get more out of that workout? That's exactly what it does. It's gonna give you that extra five to 10 minutes of intense effort so that you can actually get better results. It's not gonna make you lift more, do more, or anything else. All it's gonna do is give you the ability to do exactly what you can do, just a little bit longer. Okay, no, we will not. The shot I already talked about, so I'm not gonna go into great detail on that one. Uh, real simply, just know that it has the mental clarity component. That's the one thing I would focus on in the shot, is not only does it give you the energy you need, but it also gives you the mental clarity to get something done. That's the main thing about our shot, and that's the one thing I'll tell you to focus on. The shake, probably the most talked about thing on the planet uh, with regard to ID Live. It only has seven ingredients. Sometimes I get people to say, no, it has eight. I call it the blend one, the, the, the weight blend one, so it's resulted in seven. You know, less than seven grams of carbohydrates. We can get into the low carb discussion if you want to. I just won't do it in an open forum, but we can have the conversation afterwards if we want. Micro mill chia seeds are built into the product. Okay, most people will buy those extra and, and go to pay for them. Then you have cold filtered non-hydrogenated. What does that mean? Anybody, understand? Anybody know why we do that? Do a little research for yourself. I cannot say that the shake is lactose free, but what I can tell you is we remove 99.9% .9 of the lactose from the shake as a result of that cold filtration process. And what ends up happening is people that are lactose intolerant for the first time can actually use a whey protein shake. The other thing I'll tell you is we chose 23 grams of protein for a reason. Anyone ever taken a protein shake and felt like the gut was going to explode? I walked into gyms in Tennessee where the number one selling protein shake was an 80 gram shake. They were paying 12 to $15 for an 80 gram protein shake. Let me explain something to you real quick. The body processes about 25 grams of protein at a time. Anything more than that, guess what? You're gonna overload your kidneys, you're gonna overload the guts, and you're gonna have a bloated, gassy feel. In fact, most of it's just gonna be disgusting, the effect that it's gonna have. But it was the number one shake in that, that it had in the gym, and why was that? Anybody know? The trainers were recommending. Not only that, but because in America, more is better. That, don't you know that? More is not better. We always try to do what is ethically and morally correct. So what we did is we did 23. Why did we choose 23 if the body can take 25? I have no idea what you currently have in your stomach. I'm gonna take the chance by lowering it a little bit to make sure that you get what you need. This is what ID Life does. This, these are the kinds of things that we think about when we're creating products. We go through the whole thought process. We really are trying to do what's best for you and only give you exactly what you need and nothing that you don't. Lean, anybody like lean? Anyone try lean? Yeah. All right, so let me explain to you something about lean. Lean was not created to help you lose weight. It was a side effect. Side effects are not always bad, it's a byproduct. Here's what we did. There's this little thing, it's called sarcopenia. Anybody know what that is? Some of you that know what it is, only know what it is because you actually read it on the website, the rest of you, it's been on your website since we launched the product, go read it, it'll tell you all about it. That was a joke, <coughs> not a good one. All right, so here's the thing. At age 35, ladies, age 40, men, you start losing 1% of your lean muscle mass every year, called sarcopenia. That's what happens when you hit 65, 70, you fall, it think, you know, breaks things because you don't have that protection. So you have to actually do something about it. You have to actually, you know, get physically active, do some other things to try to keep your lean muscle mass, but most people just don't. Remember, 52% of Americans don't get the physical activity they need. Me being over 40 decided, hey, we probably need to look at this issue and see if we can't create something. So we created something that can actually help preserve lean muscle mass during catabolic state. Because as you get older and you put your body under stress, it goes catabolic. When it goes catabolic, that means it's going to try to retain its fat. Look for a fuel source. And if you haven't eaten before your workout and have a carbohydrate in your system, guess what it does? It converts protein into carbohydrate to fuel your workout. In other words, it's eating the muscle to fuel your workout. Everyone get that? Do I need to slow that down a little bit? For those of you who think, I don't want to eat before I work out because I'll just do something after, you need a carbohydrate in your system to fuel your workout. Otherwise, you could literally be creating a system where your body is eating the muscle that you're trying to create during the work that you're performing. Talk to a personal trainer, they'll tell you all about it. <laughs> okay, it really is a big deal. I used to be the guy that fought, so I don't need to, I don't need to eat before I work out, that's crazy. Yeah, you do, trust me. All right, but here's the best part. When we got this out to the public and we started getting the testing done, what we found was this. Everyone reported back, well, yeah, that, that sarcopenia thing may be taken care of, but 
I thought it was hungry as I was normal in the camp. But really, now we had put a thermogenic in it, we put a metabolic boost in it to basically push the, the branch chain amino acids that we had in it. What we didn't realize was this. Three months after we created the, the product, they came out with this long standing study on one of the main ingredients in the product. And what it said was, if you consume at least 1,000 milligrams of this particular ingredient, it's actually gonna uh, cause you to have a sugar craving reduction. Now, 80% of our refined foods in this country have added refined sugar, so guess what ended up happening? People didn't have the craving for the sugary products that they wanted anymore. So as a result, people started losing weight. Because guess what, that fourth meal of the day, some of you call it a snack, that in the US is averaging 540 calories. Everyone get that one? snack is averaging 540 calories, we call it the fourth meal of the day in the U.S., uh, started getting reduced. And if you're a wine drinker, I do apologize for lean because it just doesn't taste as good as it used to. Uh, but lean is an unbelievable product. It really does help uh, pre-workout. Yes, you can take it before bed, even though it has a thermogenic in it, because guess what? Your body is in its most uh, uh, catabolic state when you sleep, because that's when you fast the most not eating for longer periods of time, so it's fine. It won't keep you up. Energy, uh, you know, real simple. What makes our energy powder different than others? Remember one thing if you remember nothing else. 75 milligrams of fast-acting caffeine, 75 milligrams of encapsulated caffeine. Why is that important? Because it gives you the up that you want and then it gives you sustained energy, in energy over a four to six hour period. That's what makes us different. So instead of just all up with a big crash at the end, it's up and leveled out. Add about half the caffeine of your average Starbucks coffee. Yes, I tell people replace this with your Starbucks. It's a lot cheaper. And it doesn't take a long time to get through the line and all the other things you have to do with in the morning. I need nutrition. I don't know if I really need to go through this one as much. It is obviously uh, the number one product that we have. It is our, our, what I would call our bell cow. It is the thing that makes us different. Uh, you notice how I put it at the end? Okay, remember that if you remember nothing else. Don't try to throw a bunch of science at people. Get them something that they can use. We do have the health assessment. It is going to ask you about personal dietary questions. This is your free report. 15.9 seconds the average person in this company spends on that. 15.9 seconds. In other words, you're not reading this. <laughs> but we're about to change that. Uh, but the main thing about this report and what makes ID Life different is this more than anything else. We're the only company out there that gives you a free report that says you can get healthy by not taking a single one of our products. Because that report gives you all the recommendations that you need to change without recommending a single ID Life product to do it. Novel concept, isn't it? Why do we do that? Remember, we're trying to get the people healthy in this country. We are a health and wellness company, not a products company. We are a health and wellness company that happens to have products. Not a products company that happens to be in health and wellness. And if I don't get anything else across to you today, I want to make sure everyone understands that. That report is the most powerful tool that we have within the assessment. It's going to tell you something about yourself. It's going to tell somebody else something about themselves, and it's going to put them on a path to making six-inch changes rather than 40-inch changes. And believe it or not, the six-inch change will have a heck of a lot more effect on them than the 40-inch change. Did you know that in this country, that if you were going to yo-yo diet, in other words, if you're going to diet and then stop and go back, and diet and stop and go back, you're actually going to live 3.2 years less than if you just stayed right where you were. Get that? I tell people all the time, look, if you're looking for a diet, if you're looking for something like that, just stay the way you are. You're actually gonna live longer because you're not gonna put your body and your organs and everything else under stress, just stay. But if you're ready to actually make a physical change, actually going to change mentally and you're gonna change habits, then we have an answer for you. It's not easy. It's gonna require some education. It's gonna take some personal responsibility, but I can guarantee you this, when you get to the end, you'll be at a place where you're actually going to make a change that's permanent. And then we're all looking for at the end. So, the report. The ID Life uh, nutrition product itself, Chromobiology, you know, we can talk about that all day. Real simply is this. Remember, we give people what they want, when they want, and more, more importantly, when they need it. The easy thing to talk about Chromobiology is this. When do you take your omega-3s? Every person in the world takes them in the morning, unless somehow you read something and the liver processes omega-3s at night best, between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. Taking the evening, by the time they hit your stomach, you're ready to get the full benefit of them. Most people literally have very expensive urine. I get to talk to CrossFit all the athletes all the time. They, they talk about taking 2,000 milligrams of omega-3 a day. 
all of them in the morning when they're multivitamins. And I tell them, how about we take half as much, take them at night, and let me know how it works for you in a week. And they're like, well, I thought you wanted to tell me something about this program that you have. I said, no, I'm going to make a point to you. Even though you're not taking anything close to what we're taking, if you could take half as much at the right time, you can actually get a better benefit. And what ends up happening in about three days, they call in and say, okay, tell me more about this idea nutrition. It's not always about selling them on what it is we have. Sometimes it's about educating people on what it is they're currently doing because I can tell you this. If you tell somebody that their baby is ugly, they're naturally going to do this to you. <laughs> now, why do I say that? People take things, people take supplements because they believe in what they've decided that they're going to take. They've made a conscious decision that what I'm doing is best for me because I'm putting it in my mouth. If you tell them, well, what you're doing is crap. I've got something much better than that. This is the natural reaction. If, however, your statement is, hey, you're really into supplements, you know a lot about this, I'd really like you to try this because I want your hand, I want some feedback from you. Now, I'm really excited about this, you're really excited about yours. If you can just do a comparison for me, because I've never done what you've done, I'd just like to know what you think about it. I've not called their baby ugly, I've told them that they're smarter than I am, they have more information than I am, I just want their feedback. And what ends up happening when they try mine? They turn over the back panel if they're educated. They see what the difference is. They're like, oh wow, this has just as much effect as the other and it doesn't have all that other stuff in it. Why wouldn't I try that? See how the difference is? Understand that? Get that? All right, best quality, don't need to necessarily go there. Pharmaceutical grade is the one thing you can remember. What's that mean, top 1% of ingredients available? Okay. Natural cleanse, remember we talked about cleanses? If you want to cleanse, uh, there's some fast food places you can go to. <laughs> I can name it for you if you wanted to. I've been there, done that. But ID Nutrition is a natural cleanse. It takes about 90 days to get it all out. Uh, the thing about the natural cleanse process, some people will get on, that, on ID Nutrition and have kind of a gut issue, kind of an un unrest feeling in their gut. What happens is the body's trying to get all of that junk that's been building up out. Usually we tell people, if you'll just give it a couple weeks, I promise you'll feel better at the end. But it has to get it through the system. Because guess what, your body has a natural cleansing process, it's called colon, works really well and has the nutrition that it needs. I won't tell you what it does because some people are eating. So, um, nutritional thumbprints, uh, convenience, no bottles. Here, here's the thing you tell people, print out your supplement facts, take it down to your favorite vitamin shop, GNC, Walmart, wherever you want to go, and see if you can duplicate what it is that we have. Now, not on the same level, because you can't buy pharmaceutical grade over the counter. But most importantly is this, Tell them how many bottles that they're going to walk out with, because most people are going to walk out with 12 to 15 bottles, and then try to figure out how to put them in the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday thing, and make sure that they take them. You know, we have strip packs. If you want to explain the power of something, always have this with you. That's real simple. It has my name on it, tells me exactly what I need, because guess what? There's 1.3 million possible outcomes. This is mine, not yours. Yours is going to look different than mine. Okay, that's powerful. Uh, cost effective. The average uh, good quality multivitamin in this country is about $59. Okay, 60 bucks. The average omega-3 is roughly about 70 bucks. A month? A month. So 60 and 70 is 130. Our average cost is $70.22. Half, almost. It's crazy, isn't it? And it's pharmaceutical grade, with chronobiology, with your name on it, it strips packs, without bottles. It really isn't a brand when you really start thinking about it. But you have to break it down to a simplistic form. And then, of course, scheduled delivery. You don't have to go to the store. It shows up at your house. And if you don't think that's a big deal, why do you think Amazon Prime has all the members that it has? You know, in Dallas, they now have Amazon where if you order before 2 o'clock, you have it before the end of the day for an extra 12 bucks. And guess what? People are paying it every single day because they want it now. They want convenience. They don't want to go to the store. The next thing Amazon's going into is grocery shopping. <laughs> You're literally going to put in your grocery list. Amazon's going to deliver your groceries to your door, so you don't even have to go to the grocery store anymore because I don't have time. Number one excuse we hear when somebody says they want to make a change, yeah, I want to do that, but I don't have time. It has replaced the it's too hard excuse. <laughs> in other words, when somebody says, you know, it's, it, it's, I just don't have time, it's usually it, it's too hard. I don't want to change what I'm currently doing. I don't want it to affect what I'm currently doing. I promise you, if you want something bad enough, you'll make the time. There's things that we all do every single day that we made a conscious choice that we're going to make the time for. The challenges, they absolutely work. Flat out work. Jen spent a, in, uh, an immeasurable amount of time on these challenges. 
Uh, I know because I had to help her with them as far as you know dealing with us all the time with all the changes that she was making. Because what had ended up happening was we had people that were being the test dummies along the way to make sure that the transformations were actually working the way that we programmed them. And she has some, uh, some interesting concepts with regard to the way that she programmed challenges. If you haven't seen, these are progressive in nature. They start here, and if you get to where this one is easy, and remember, if you got to week two, and week two is challenging for you, stay on week two. Okay, if you finish 28 days and you're still in week two, that's fine. Start again, and guess what? You start in week two. When week two gets easy, go to week three. Because guess what happens? When you get to weight loss challenge and all four weeks are easy, move over to fit. Because now you're ready for fit. Keep working through fit. When fit gets easy, go to performance. That's how they were designed to work along the path of getting you from one place to the other. Because we're all on a different journey, we're all on a different path, and we're all on a different timeline. We're all built differently. But this program, when you work all the way through it, what you find at the end, when you get to performance, and performance is easy, you have definitely made a transformation from where you started. And I don't even care if you started in the performance challenge because you're already kind of fit. You will make a difference. Value all this application does anything and everything you can imagine. It gives you the fitness, it gives you the nutrition, it gives you everything that you need to basically track your calories, uh, all of the information you need. You literally have a personal trainer in your pocket if you need it. Uh, it has a nutritionist in your pocket because all of these programs are dietitian approved. If you just need education on how to make something healthy, you know, grandma's chicken cacciatore tastes great, but I really wish I could cut about 600 calories a serving out of it. This will actually show you how to make it in a healthy way. If you love Chinese food, great. This will actually teach you how to make it so that you can actually learn how to do these things yourself. Simple little things, simple little changes that actually give you the health that you're looking for. Now, sometimes I do something a little crazy when I do these things. Uh, and Scotty, how am I doing on time? OK. You can run over every time, so why would this be doing? Yes, I know. But when I, when I decide I'm gonna go crazy, and I was talking to Scott last night, and I said, you know, one of the things is I throw a lot of information at you. You guys have gotten a lot of information today. The good news is, 